current living in a very unique time in our world with the uh, current pandemic that has caused people to alter their lives. And I want to speak mainly to the world of education as an educator. Um, I know in the spring of 2020, when uh, the world as we knew it drastically changed, especially in the world of education, many teachers, students, parents did not know how to react to this. So a lot of changes have gone on and will continue to go on. This video, I'm going to talk about a way that teachers, students, parents, and people even outside of education can perhaps um, create a unique way and a fun way to have a learning activity. And this is built around the idea of what's called an escape room. And if, if uh, anyone's ever done an escape room, um, it's a it's typically it's a physical room a group goes into and you solve a series of puzzles to obtain um, a team objective. This is going to be a little different because we're going to be online instead of in a, in a physical room. But some of the puzzles and challenges can be uh, mirrored and similar. So um, I'm going to walk through the process of how to create this and then talk about um, how this can be used in education or non-education setting. Um, first and foremost, I want to mention that I, I created a few images, and you'll see these in a minute, in a simple program of Microsoft Paint. So you don't need to you don't need use anything fancy like Photoshop or uh, any higher end um, production tools. I just use Paint. You can use any any type program. And, and make this note: you don't even really need to make 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 images. You'll see this as we go through the process. I just want to mention that of where these images come from when we get into the process. So um, I'm going to go, I'm logged into my Google account and I'm going to go into Google Docs and I'm going to use Google Forms to do this. So I'm going to create, nope, oh, that's not the right one. I'm going to create a Google Form. Now a form is, is often used on you know website or something to gather information so if you want to send a questionnaire out to people or a survey or something you can create a form and let people enter items in okay for this we're going to create a little bit of a game i'm going to call it the uh, uh escape room challenge so i'm going to create a blank one i'm not going to use any of the, the provided forms but create a blank one and again i'm going to call this the um okay i got it i don't need to be told that escape room challenge now when i create this i also mention this i'm going to make this very 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 basic the idea of this is it can be scaled to any grade level any uh subject uh the possibilities are up to the creativity of the person creating it whether it's a student whether it's a teacher so i'm going to just for the purpose of this demonstration use a very very simple approach and hopefully some wheels will start spinning and people can think, oh, I could do this with uh, whatever subject you teach or whatever grade level you teach. So um, keep that idea in mind. So what I want to do is I'm going to create, uh, I have three questions in my escape room challenge. And I think yeah, it'll automatically change that if you give it a title. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to create what's called a section. And the section will come after this. Now I can put a little description here in this at the top first. I can say uh, answer the three puzzles and you will succeed. Something along that line. Okay, simple. So in my section two, um, I'm just going to call this puzzle one. And I'll give a description here in a minute, but under the question area, I'm actually going to change this to, uh, I'm going to use a short answer type of question. Now you could make a multiple choice. Um, I'm doing mine short answer because I want them to physically type something in multiple choice. Obviously you pick one of the uh, answers that would be correct in the, the list of choices. So um, for the question, instead of the question, I actually have some pictures that i'm going to put in here i'm going to put actually one picture i created uh these pictures in paint so again a pretty simple problem i'm adding a picture and again you don't have to add a picture you could type all of these instructions out so a equals 2 b equals 6 c equals b minus a the question is 
what is C? Okay, and we're going to require this. By the way, you can change the size of your picture if it's too big. By the way, also find pictures on online. You don't have to create your own. You can probably find some puzzles out there. So what is C? So C is B minus A. C would be equal to 4. Hopefully that's not too complicated. As I said, I'm making this pretty simple. Um, the short answer. Let's see. Why is it not letting me... I need response validation. Okay, that needs to be selected. And this way I can have my number equal to, and you can do a lot of different ideas in here. I'm just, just again, scratching the surface. Number, we said C is equal to 4. So I'll put 4. And over here you can put a, a statement if it's not correct. So something like try again. I'll be kind of nice and not be mean. So this will be our first question. All right, and the reason I did a section, you'll see why I did a section here in a second. I'm going to do another section below this. This is called, uh, this is our next section. I'll call this puzzle two. And um, when I add a question, I'm again going to do short answer. Feel free to experiment, try different questions. I'm going to add another picture just because I did this earlier. Should mention this also that it's always good to plan before you actually get in and start making the uh, form. Um, now, this, this one's a little trickier. My favorite bird, looks like it could be a parrot, is the question is, what is the missing letter? It's going to be the same letter. We'll make this required. Turn on response validation. This is going to be text. That contains the letter R. I may even put beside this case sensitive. So people know to put the correct answer. Put a response here if it's incorrect. Let's do one more. Uh, I, I should not have added a question. Actually, I need to add a section. And the reason you add a section is for this reason. If you don't, what will happen is um, it will show all the questions on one screen. The sections separate them, so when you get one correct, it goes to the next section. We'll see that in a minute. Puzzle 3, I'm going to add a question. Again, short answer. Made these pictures in Microsoft Paint. Nothing extraordinary. Now this one here is, which number is the largest? Okay, pretty easy, hopefully. I'll make sure it's required. Response validation, a number is equal to. 199, hopefully that's the correct one. Um, guess again. So this format, once you get in a routine, it's pretty straightforward. The hardest part is coming up with the questions. And again, I would plan that ahead of time. One idea I want to mention before we kind of wrap this part up is you can add other items. You could add a video. So if a, a, a YouTube video, whether it's made by yourself or you use it from YouTube, you can add a video. You can add other items. You can add text. You can add, uh, actually, you can import other questions. Um, so this, actually, I'm going to add one more section. And this is going to say, congratulations, or you win. How about that? And what I actually should do is this, just because it could be fun, is say, uh, enter your name. That way you can collect the people's names if you want to know who successfully completed this. So you can say short answer. Let's make it required because it's, you know, we want people to enter their name. Um, so I'm going to scroll back up and walk through this kind of quickly. So my top section is just the introduction. Now, the actions here is continue to the next section. So it's going to show this. There'll be a next button. We'll see it in a minute. It'll go here. We'll solve it. 
and then the action here once they get it correct will go to the next section and on down to the end so that's why we use sections between or for each question okay so once this is done how do we launch this and share this so if you hit the send button there's some few options the one i like to use the most is i'm going to find a link i'm going to use the short url i'm going to copy this okay now if i open up another browser window i can paste that and this is what my my uh escape challenge looks like so if you send this to other people this will be what they see whether it's on their phone on their computer tablet wherever they receive the uh the the message so first question what is c we know that it's four i'm just going to put the wrong answer see what happens hit next oh try again okay we know it's four takes next question my favorite bird is a parrot with a missing letter i'm gonna try lowercase r Oh, that didn't work. How about uppercase Y? No. How about uppercase R? That worked. Numbers the largest. Looks like negative nine. We know that's incorrect. So let's see what happens. It's always good to go through and check your answers to make sure they do work. Sometimes that's uh, <laughs> overlooked, an overlooked step. So we can go to next. Uh, nice job. Put her name and submit okay so that's how that's done now i'll go back here so i want to talk about a couple ideas before we completely wrap this idea up again i mentioned earlier this is used this can be used for any grade level from pre-k through higher education um, you can make these as simple or as challenging as you want I actually have, I'll have a couple links in the description if you want to try a couple I made earlier. One's pretty easy. The other one I purposely made a little more challenging. Um, this can be used by teachers. They can use this to create challenges for their students. Teachers could have students create escape room challenges as an assignment to demonstrate things they know. They could share them and have other students play the game uh, back and forth. Um, this could actually be used outside of education as a corporate training module or something along those lines. So, you know, a lot of possibilities with the use of this, um, as you could see, and hopefully it made sense, pretty easy to step through the process. Um, and again, I didn't show every bell and every whistle that can be done in Google Forms. I did the simplest of the simple just to demonstrate this. One idea I didn't mention is it will show your responses up here. So if you log back into this, um this uh quiz or this uh, sorry this form it'll show the responses so at the bottom it shows what the people entered and then at the bottom their names so um if you do create any of these what would be fantastic is imagine if we have a network of these types of challenges that people from different disciplines can share with each other across different grade levels and that way um you know rather than reinvent the wheel every time people can have um, a big database of these types of challenges so i uh, hope this is something that that is rewarding and and can be beneficial to uh, teachers students parents or anybody that uses this idea so good luck and i hope that this may be something that uh, you would want to use um, in these crazy times of education uh, or crazy and challenging times outside of education. Thank you for watching.